What's happening YouTube and what's happening Michael B? Back in the day gamer here, coming at you with a video response to Michael B the Game Genie's Top 3 Tuesdays. The theme for this week is import games. Now by no means am I an expert in this area, but I do have some good ones. Before we get into my top three picks, I have a few here I want to mention. Now, had he not chosen this game, it would probably be my top favorite import, and that's Super Back to the Future 2. Now, this is a great game. The graphics are excellent. The soundtrack is excellent. There's enemies and bosses that are straight out of the movie. Just good, good movie port. Not anything like the one we had. Um, the gameplay isn't perfect. If it were, if it were a little better, this would probably be one of my top 16-bit games. Period. But anyhow, we're gonna move past that because he picked it, so I'm not. Another one that I'm not going to mention, but I am mentioning right now, is Splatterhouse. He also picked this as one of his top three, and obviously, it's an awesome game. If you've ever played it, you know why it didn't get ported here in America. But he covered all that, and you probably already know it. So moving on to the next game that I would like to be in this list, but it is not, is Goonies on the Famicom. Now, when he announced that Imports was the theme for this week, I was super excited because I had wanted Goonies on Famicom for a long time, and I had ordered it from eBay a week before. So I figured it would get here in plenty of time. Well, it didn't. Uh, it's a great game. It's a lot of fun. It's way better than the turd we got here, Goonies 2, which I kind of like because of nostalgia, but it's not a great game. So that one didn't come in the mail yet, so it's not part of my top three. But moving on to my top three, my number three pick is a game I'm sure none of you have ever heard of, and that's Tetris Gaiden. Now this is like a Tetris battle game. Even when you're in one player mode, you battle against the computer, but it's really fun. Two players, there's little orbs in your blocks, and when you complete a line that has an orb in it, it goes to the side. When you collect so many orbs, you use a special power that screws the person you're playing over. Uh, you know, like gives them more bricks or adds spaces to their bricks. All kinds of things like that. This being a Super Famicom game, it's 16-bit, so it has some background scenes and graphics that are pretty good looking. But this game is fun for the gameplay itself. You know, it's Tetris. My number two pick for this week is Super Bomberman 4. Now, it's no Super Bomberman 2, which came out here on the NES, but it's pretty close. It obviously has a battle mode just like that with like 10 different choices. Still, they're fun, but none of them are as good as Super Bomberman 2, which we have here. This game does have a fun story mode. I really enjoyed playing it. I have not yet completed it just for lack of putting time into it. It's semi-hard. You know, I, I definitely think I can beat it if I put the time in, but I just haven't yet definitely a good game to pick up. I don't know why it never came here, but it's cheap. Give it a shot. Now, my number one pick for this top three Tuesday is a game that I haven't seen anybody mention yet, and I'm excited about that because it's a great game, and I hope I'm the only one to mention it, but that is Kid Dracula for the Famicom. This game's a lot of fun. It reminds me a lot of Splatterhouse. It being Famicom is only 8-bit. It's a kind of a cutesy platformer. It has good graphics. The controls are pretty good. Not quite as good as Splatterhouse controls, but they're good. It um, has some neat little things like the first board is a complete layout of the original Castlevania. Uh, some strange things in this game are definitely the bosses. Now, the first boss you have here, what is that about? Why did they choose this guy for a boss? I'm sure 
he has a big part to play in why it did not get ported here to America. Um, another interesting boss is this chicken. Why is a large chicken that shoots roasted chickens out at you a boss in a Dracula-type game? I don't know, but it's there, and I think it makes it interesting. There's boards in this, like uh, the skateboard roller coaster thing, where sometimes you skate through it no problem, and sometimes you just keep getting screwed. Kind of reminds me of that board towards the end of Double Dragon, where all you have to do is walk past, but the damn bricks come out and knock the hell out of you. You know, sometimes you walk right through, don't get hit at all. Sometimes you lose four guys in a row getting hit. Screws your whole game. The skateboard roller coaster part's kind of like that. A little easier than the Double Dragon, but, you know, it's kind of like that. This is definitely a good game. Check it out. I believe it was ported on the Game Boy. I'm not sure, because I've never played it, if it's an exact port, but I can't imagine it is. Because the things like, you know, this first boss guy. <laughs> Don't imagine that was going to fly with Nintendo of America. But there you have it. That's my top three choices for the imports. Only in my collection, by the way. Obviously, there's many more imports that blow these out of the water. I did not even touch any RPGs. But that's my pick for fun import games to pick up and play. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank Michael B. Because I'm really enjoying this Top 3 Tuesday thing. And it looks to me like a lot of other people are as well. So I hope he keeps it up for a while. I hope you like my video. If you do, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think about my games. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep it retro!